I'd like to talk about Middle Woodland culture in the Southeast in two parts. Today, or in this lecture, part one, we'll focus on early Middle Woodland culture as represented by Marksville and moving into late Middle Woodland culture as represented by the Copina. In a second PowerPoint presentation, I'll continue talking about late Middle Woodland culture with examples from Swift Creek and a little bit of, about Conesty. Middle Woodland peoples lived from about 100 BC to AD 500. The Hopewell interaction sphere that we already discussed affected Middle Woodland societies in the Southeast. Here, of course, are the <clears throat> Ohio branch of the Hopewell, the Illinois branch of the Hopewell. We can divide the Middle Woodland in the Southeast into two periods of influence. The early Middle Woodland, which was the most affected by Hopewell culture, and late Middle Woodland, which continued on past the end of Hopewell. I'll talk first about the early Middle Woodland, AD 0 to 300, using Marksville, Louisiana, as an example. Then I'll talk about late Middle Woodland, AD 300 to 600, using Copina and Swift Creek as major examples, with the brief mention of the Conestee phase in the Appalachian summit area. Early Middle Woodland in the Southeast, from AD 0 to 300, is a culture that seems tied to Hopewell, definitely trading ties, and we suppose also sharing of rituals. So long distance trading between Illinois, Ohio, and the Southeast, and it occurs at the same time as Hopewell. We find Hopewell or Hopewell-like items in the Southeast. Likewise, we found Southeastern raw materials sent up to Hopewell sites, and we find similar phases of woodland burial mound construction. The Marksville culture, early Middle Woodland, um, was located in all of Louisiana, southern Arkansas, over into eastern Texas and the Gulf Coast. In other words, the lower Mississippi Valley. It appears to have risen from trade with classic Hopewell and was at the same time with classic Hopewell. The Marksville site found in east central Louisiana from 100 BC to AD 400 was a ceremonial mound center. There were six to seven earthen enclosures on a bluff on the former channel of Mississippi River. Shown here is the largest, a C-shaped enclosure with three conical and two rectangular platform mounds. The other enclosures that I don't show were circular to oval in shape. Inside this large C-shaped enclosure, mound four began as a rectangular hard clay platform five feet high and 25 feet long. A burial vault was put in underneath it with the crematory on top of the burial vault. Inside the underground burial vault, a couple of primary burials, that is in flesh, were laid out. The vault was then covered with the log roof and sealed with seven alternating layers of cane mats and clay. It sure sounds a lot like some of the Hopewell burials that we've heard about already. Many cremations were placed on top of the vault, and then the cremations and the vault were covered with two layers of earth and more burials. And in the end, a total of 12 burials were laid in this uh, mound. The mound uh, grew to be 25 feet tall and 100 feet in diameter. So not only are the enclosures and mounds here in the Southeast very like Hopewell, so is the pottery of the Marksville culture. Note the similar shapes, the use of bird imagery, the use of positive and negative space, and the designs on these pots are incised. For comparison, here's a very similar looking vessel from Mound City, Ohio, in the heart of the Hopewell culture. Marksville culture, we also find other Hopewell type artifacts, such as copper pan pipes and ear spools, and platform pipes like you see here but instead of being carved out of stone or pecked out of stone like they were among the Hopewell, these are made of clay. And one figurine head. The late Middle Woodland in the Southeast, AD 300 to 600, occurs during the end of the classic Hopewell in, in Ohio. And at this time, Hopewellian trade items decline, both in volume and, ex and in extent. 
During this time in the Southwest, we see increasing regional differentiation. Hopewell items from the Midwest are rare, and instead we start finding locally produced substitutes of widely varying styles and diverse forms of mortuary ceremonialism. We get smaller, more localized trading spheres. Examples of late middle woodland that I'll talk about include the Copina in the Middle Tennessee Valley in northern Alabama, the Swift Creek culture centered in Georgia, and the Conistee in the Appalachian Summit. There are some long distance trade goods in the late middle woodland, and these include copper beads, ear spools, and like you see illustrated here, real shaped gorgets. Now what's a gorget? It's a, um, a something that you wear around your neck and it lies on your chest. And so here you can see maybe the two holes that were used to attach the necklace that it hung from. We also find uh, evidence for long distance trade in galena, a type of metal, Gulf Coast shell cups and beads, and greenstone implements. Here, for example, are some, uh, a real shaped gorget up in Ohio at one of the um, geometric earthworks. The Copina, AD 100 to 500, is found in the Central Tennessee River Valley of Northern Alabama. And it is a late metal woodland time period. The name is made up by archaeologists. It's derived from the first three letters of the word copper and the last three letters of the word galena, capina. We have found habitation sites, burial mounds, and burial caves among the Copina people. Copina appears to have arisen locally, but does show some influence from the Ohio Hopewell. The habitation sites are found on bottomland ridges. Um, so the major villages have underground storage pits, which would be for long-term storage of food. And then winter camps are found in upland rock shelters. Very few burials are found at villages. It appears that the Copina separated their living areas from their cemeteries. However, the burial mounds are located near the villages. Burial mounds were low and conical and small, made of sand or clay. Um, people would lay out a primary burial, the whole body, and then uh, in a pit. And then as they built the mound up, they would add in more burials in the mound fill. Some burials were extended, some were flexed, that is the bodies folded up, and some were cremated. Most burials did not have any grave goods. Others usually had maybe one to two items placed in the grave with the body, and the most you would find would be perhaps eight grave goods. Interestingly, no pottery was placed in graves. Burial caves, we find deep deposits of cremations and grave goods, and the, not only were the bodies burned, the human bodies cremated, the grave goods were also. We also find trough burials, that is, they used wooden dugout logs or bark troughs and placed the bodies in them, or they wrapped them in bark matting. Copina grave goods include copper real shaped gorgets, like we've already seen. Here the holes are still clear and easily seen. Ear spools, bracelets, breastplates, celts. Celts are a type of um, axe, as it were, or woodworking tool, and beads. Galena nodules, greenstone celts, and the very characteristic long Copina projectile points, as you see here. Also large steatite elbow pipes were made. These pictures show you several views of one owl pipe. Here is where the pipe stem would have been inserted, say a piece of cane, and here is where you would put the material that you were smoking. Copina grave goods are made of local, mostly local materials, such as greenstone, steatite, some copper, 
and of course the stone used for points. However, some grave goods are made of exotic raw materials or show exotic influence. So the copper ornaments are often stylistically similar to classic Hopewell. Marine shell cups and beads are coming from the Gulf Coast. And Galena, we think, was coming from the upper Mississippi Valley, perhaps via trade through the Ohio Hopewell. The small number of copper artifacts and their stylistic hom homogeneity suggest a single exchange transaction with the Ohio Hopewell. In other words, we don't find intensive or continuous trade with Ohio Hopewell. Just a few hints here and there. The pottery was similar to the early woodland pottery in this area. Most of it has a surface finish that is plain or check stamped and it's usually limestone tempered. But we also find some simple stamped, complicated stamped, and fabric impressed pottery. Here you see an example of a check stamped uh, body with the design up near the, uh, underneath the rim. Pots with podal supports in the bottom became smaller and less popular. So those are the little kind of, um, not quite feet, but little squared off areas on the bottom. Interestingly, we find the construction of flat topped or platform mounds at small villages in the southeast. We don't find mounds like this up in the Hopewell in the Midwest. And um, until we found these mounds, we thought that flat topped or platform mounds were found really only at Mississippian sites much later in time. But here they are at Middle Woodland sites. At the Walling site in northern Alabama, the mound appeared to have been the focus of communal feasting. So unlike Mississippian flat top mounds, which held permanent structures on top, these appeared to have been sites of periodic uh, rituals and feasting. Copina declined by about AD 500, and that decline is part of a regional trend of isolationism and less elaborate ritualism. So please continue to the narrated lecture on Middle Woodland Swift Creek.